Greetings, everybody. We're ready here to jump into uh, this very, very important chapter. And so make sure that you're paying attention to each piece uh, as this is some very critical material for us to get through before we get to the end of your school year. And that's coming up very quickly. So let's just get to it. Uh, we're going to talk today about inverse variations. We had talked about direct variations before. Um, even way back, you've started with direct variations where um, you've got something that we'd say would vary directly. It's the, the foundations of y equals mx plus b where you don't even have a separate y-intercept. So y equals kx, just to review, is a direct variation, an inverse variation. Okay, instead of y equals kx is y equals k over x. In both cases, uh, k would be our constant of variation, which would mean there's a set of ordered pairs, x and y, that depend on each other in such a way that x and y will always produce the same number, either by division or by multiplication. These can both be written in a different way, which is useful for finding out how much your constant of variation would be. So if we would divide both sides by x here, and if you multiply both sides by x here, we get a different form. So this is a different form, a different way of looking at a direct variation. A direct variation is when you have a common ratio, and a inver an inverse variation is where you have a common product. Okay, it almost sounds backwards, but this is how you would find the constant of variation and then be able to write the equation from that. Now you can have a set of ordered pairs, and uh, ordered pairs, as you know, can create many different patterns. Okay, a set of ordered pairs could create a linear relationship, it could create a parabola, it can create um, a, a function to the third degree, which we've already looked at. We can have square root functions, all different various kinds of functions. Um, but sometimes they don't fit very well into those patterns so much as they do with either a an inverse variation or direct variation. And we have a very simple way of testing a set of numbers such as this to see whether it's a direct or an inverse variation or maybe it doesn't fit any of those patterns and um, you would have to use a different method. So in order to find out if it's a direct variation you're looking always to see what you get when you divide y divided by x always to see what you get when you divide y divided by x and see if you find the same number each time. So we're going to check to see y over x. So the first one we check, 15 over 2 gives us 7.5. Now if it's a direct variation, every one of these division problems should give us the same answer. So when I look at 7.5 divided by 4, I'm not getting 7.5. I mean, here it's pretty obvious because you're already taking 7.5 and divide it by 4. I'm not even really necessarily interested in the number except for the fact that it doesn't come out to be the same. So no, it's not a direct variation and you move on. If it did come out to be 7.5, you'd need to be sure that you check the other numbers too to make sure that you always get the same number. Okay, so this one's not a direct variation, so we check to see if it's an inverse variation. An inverse variation, you're always checking to see if the product is the same. So you're checking to see if 2 times 15 is the same as 4 times 7.5, and if that matches 10 times 3, and if that matches 15 times 2. And what we find is that in each one of these cases, we get 30. And since each one of them gives us the same exact number, it is an inverse variation. Now we have this second part, though. It says then write the equation. What we found when you found that number that's in common, you have found k. 
And remember, our inverse variation is y equals k over x. So to find the equation, you have to plug 30 in for k. So this part right here is the answer to this question right here, write the equation. So once you found the constant of variation, you take it and you put it into the equation that applies. If it's a direct variation, you use the direct variation equation. If it's the inverse one, you use the inverse one. All right, so let's do this a couple more times. So we want to check out if it's direct or inverse or neither. Now this is where it's important for you guys to practice in your assignment so that you get to the point where you're not really thinking so hard about what to do. Because I know you're all capable of it, but don't neglect the practice because you need to make it more automatic. All right, so to check to see if it's a direct variation, you need to check 10 over 2. That gives you 5. 8 over 4. We know that gives you 2. It's not 5, so it's already fallen apart. Not a direct variation. Let's check the products. 2 times 10 is 20. 4 times 8 is 32. That's not 20. So in this case, you don't have a direct variation, and you don't have an inverse variation, and you just move on. As soon as you find one that doesn't match, then you say it can't be. But if you start finding that it does look like it's the same, you have to keep going until you find it. All right, so let's look at this one. Check to see if it's a direct variation. 8 divided by 0.2 is 40. Okay. Um, now, if you have decimals or whatever and you're unsure, go ahead and just throw them in the calculator real quick. Whatever calculator you have will do this very nicely. Oops. And I missed that. 8 divided by 0.2. There we go. So there's your 40. 20 divided by 0.5 will also give you 40. 40 divided by 1 is 40. And 60 divided by 1.5 is also 40. There's my constant of variation. K is 40. It's a direct variation. So you would identify it as direct, and your equation that you get, since k is 40, y equals kx is your uh, formula for your direct variation, y equals 40x. And this is the answer to that section. second question, find the equation. Okay? All right. Let's do it again. We want to check to see what we've got here. We want to check for direct variation. Direct variation, you're checking to see if the ratios are the same. First one, we 40 divided by 0.2 gives you 200. 16 divided by 0.5 does not give you 200. Let's check that. 16 divided by 0.5, 32, nope, not 200. So we know it's not direct, but we can check then for inverse. 0.2 times 40 is 8. 0.5 times 16 is 8. Don't stop there, though. You can't tell for sure until you've tried the others. 1 times 8 is 8. 2 times 4 is 8. Okay, so our inv our equation then, k is 8. It, so the equation has to be based off of the inverse equation, which is y equals k over x. k over x, here's your equation. Now, you might say, well, wait a minute, what's this other thing? that you've got hiding over here. After you find the equation, then it's useful to use the equation. Now you've done things like this with proportionality before earlier in the year for the direct variations. 
Same with the inverse variations. Once you've found the equation, then you need to be able to take the x or the y and plug it in and find out what it, what goes with it. So if I want to find y when x equals 16, I simply take the equation that we got and plug it in and get an answer. So the answer to this question is y equals 0.5. So you could do that any time they ask you to find out how much y is when x equals a number or how much x is when y equals a number once you have your inverse variation or your direct variation for that matter if it happens to be one of those. All right, now what we do is we, we up the level a little bit and we say that there are times when something can vary inversely in one way and directly in another way. Okay, direct variation if you're doing it in combination is called a joint uh, varying jointly and when it varies jointly with something um, that means that it has a couple of different things that it varies directly with and sometimes you have something varying inversely with a portion as well. So let's go through some of these examples for combinations. Okay, so if z varies jointly with x and y, you still have a constant of variation. We know it varies in some way, so we have our constant of variation. But in this case, it's not just varying with one variable, it's varying with another. So varying jointly z equals k times x and y. So a nice joint variation. When you have a combination, you can have direct variations, you can have joint variations, and you can have inverse variations all mixed in. Each one of them has a k though, a constant of variation. So for example, if z varies jointly with x and y and inversely with w, that means x and y will go in the numerator and w will go in the denominator, like this. You have your constant of variation. Here's your joint variation with x and y and inversely puts the w in the denominator. z varies directly with x and inversely with the product of y and w. That puts x in your numerator and y and w in your denominator. Okay, so it's just putting a couple of those concepts together. So if you're given these variable uh, numbers, you can find k and you can write an equation that can be worked with with that, and that's the last little bit of our lesson. Okay, so we have, we're going to write a function under the uh, information that z varies directly with x and inversely with y. Once we have the function written, we're going to find z when you know x and y equal a certain thing. So let's start off with writing the function or writing the equation. Okay, it says it varies directly with x and inversely with y. So we know we have a constant of variation in play. And since we have a constant of variation in play, we have a k and x over y because directly with x, inversely with y. We want to find the function if z equals 9 when x equals 3 and y equals 8. So we need to plug in 9 and 3 and 8 into our equation. There's your 9, there's your 3, there's your 8, and then we need to solve for k. So 72 equals k times 3. Divide both sides by 3, you get 24. k is 24. Your equation includes the variables, but your constant is replaced with the number. So right there, that's your equation, your function that goes with these words and these numbers. Now if you want to find z when x equals 4 and y equals 2, you take your equation that you got 
and you're going to plug in the X and the Y that you're given in the second part of the equation. And when you do that, it's simply a matter of simplifying that out and you'll get 48 on that problem. All right, that brings us to the end of today's lesson. Your job is to then work on the assignment and get that done. And you will um, then work your way forward and keep up every day. Don't forget to tune in, watch the videos and do the submission forms and, and work it out. Make sure that you're doing a good job on the assignments that I have remaining in the year. I've done some, some good changes on that for you. So that's it. All right. Have a very good and blessed day.